This is Discovery, a program where you can discover the meaning and the message of the Bible. Have you ever made a decision that you later regretted because the outcome wasn't what you expected and it had bad consequences? We're discovering the Old Testament book of Daniel with our speaker Derek Lindley and this time we reach chapter 6 and what is probably one of the most well-known stories in the Bible. It's an event that teaches us much about the faithfulness of God towards those who love him and about the steadfastness of his servant Daniel and about a king making a wrong decision. Chapter 6 opens with King Darius appointing 120 satraps or provincial governors to rule throughout his Persian empire. Over these governors were three key administrators, one of whom was Daniel, who displayed such an excellent attitude. He was tactful, respectful and reasonable in his approach to people and situations. Therefore, due to his exceptional qualities, the king planned to make him first amongst equals. This stirred up jealousy amongst his two colleagues, who were horrified that some old Jewish exile from a conquered country should be promoted. They tried in vain to find faithful Daniel guilty of misconduct, but his integrity was unimpeachable. There was no sign of negligence in his work or evidence of public or private corruption. His enemies hatched a plot built on the king's vanity to catch Daniel out in the practice of his religion. They urged Darius to issue an edict that only he should be prayed to for the next 30 days if anyone had a request. Failure to comply meant time out in the lion's den. The irreversible decree was published and the king was unaware that his advisers had effectively framed Daniel. Learning that the edict had been issued, Daniel went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened towards Jerusalem. Three times a day he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God just as he had done before. Chapter 6 verse 10 his enemies reported him to the king, who was greatly distressed. Darius's self-glorifying law had unforeseen consequences. He made every effort to rescue his favourite administrator, but the law of the Medes and Persians could not be repealed. Darius signed the injunction against God's servant, and he was thrown into the lion's den. The king said to Daniel, May your God, whom you serve continually, rescue you. Verse 16. Quite a remarkable statement from a pagan king who'd recently decided he could be God for a month. The den was sealed. The king spent a sleepless night fasting and wondering whether his wise counsellor would be delivered or devoured. In Babylon, the lion was a major symbol of power and only the emperor was allowed to keep lions. They were kept in a pit close to the palace and ate meat scraps from the king's table. At the first light of dawn, the king got up and hurried to the lion's den. He called to Daniel in an anguished voice, verses 19 to 20. Imagine his relief when Daniel answered and told how the king of kings had dealt with the king of the beasts. My God sent his angel and shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me because I was found innocent in his sight. Verse 22. The king was overjoyed. Daniel was lifted from the den. No wound was found on him. His false accusers were flung into the den along with their wives and children and before they reached the floor of the den the lions overpowered them and crushed all their bones. Verse 24 Daniel was living proof 
of the truth of Psalm 5 verse 12. For surely, O Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them with your favour as with a shield. Warren Wearsby comments, The angel not only controlled the hungry beasts, but also kept Daniel company. I love Spurgeon's comment on this chapter. It is a good thing the lions never tried to eat Daniel. They never would have enjoyed him, because he was 50% grit and 50% backbone. Instead of one tough old Jew, the lions got a lot of tender, spineless Persians for breakfast. Praise God that although Daniel grew up in courts filled with luxury and sensuality, lust and self-seeking, idolatry and ruthless cruelty, he emerged as a man of pure and stainless character, even by the acknowledgement of his enemies. The relieved monarch issued a universal decree that all his subjects must fear and reverence the God of Daniel, for he is the living God, and he endures for ever. His kingdom will not be destroyed, and his dominion will never end. Verse 26. The keeping power of God is very wonderful. Consider the amazing track record of Daniel's wise and honourable service. His is a spotless record, squeaky clean, after 60 years in public office. He refused to compromise and continued to seek to be a godly influence in a godless society. Such consistency. Consistency is defined as doing the right things every day. His integrity shines through. He spent one night in his eighties in the lion's den, but a lifetime in the palace of pagan kings. Daniel's testimony in the dissolute court of two world powers was nothing short of miraculous. His unaffected, unassuming life was a powerful witness to God's saving grace as he spoke truth to power decade after decade. Amongst the scribes who copied the Old Testament, Daniel chapter 7 is considered the greatest chapter in the scriptures. It gives the most comprehensive, detailed prophecy of future events. It is history written down before it took place. Join me next time as we discover this important chapter. This has been talk number six in a series of 13, Discovering the Old Testament Book of Daniel. Thank you for being with us today. Do plan to listen next time. Until then, this is Keith Stuffins on behalf of Derek Lindley and all the Discovery team to say goodbye. Goodbye.